。はい。Go. Good evening, Asia. I'm Mike Liu with Victor Yu, representing the、A、Asian Bird Fair at Mexico, and we welcome you to ABF Online Session Number Nine. Tonight, we bring you to another exciting destination in Asia. Our speaker、uh, has been a bird for 20 years,、uh, Mr. Philip Roberts. He will introduce us. To the birds of China and also the birding industry, Philip Nihao. Nihao, Michael, Mike. Philip, you have a lot of fans tonight. People, we have delegate, we have friends from Sri Lanka, Cambodia,、mm -hmm. Taiwan, Philippines, Uganda, Colombia, and Ecuador waiting for you here on Zoom. So, if you're ready, you can、Thank、start you. now. Okay. Thank you. First, please allow me to express my Heartfelt thanks to all of you、uh, to you know to thank you for your interest、uh, in bird, about the bird information in China. So、uh, now my name is Philip, as you know. So today I'm going to tell you, share with you some of the information about birds in China.、And、I hope you like it, and also some other informations how can you know you enjoy. Your time in China. Yeah. So shall I share the、uh, PPT now? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Cannot hear. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so my topic tonight is bird in China. Well, China is, I think, to lots of people, is a interesting but mysterious destination. So, for the tonight, I'm going to tell you some information about what you can, what kind of birds you can see, and what makes birding in China different. So, because we only have 40 minutes. It's not really possible for me to share all the information I know about birds in China, but、uh, I will try my best. And、uh, if you have questions, or if you know, I'm very happy to share with you. Later on, you can always contact us, and I'm very happy to tell you. So first,、uh, I'm a Tibetan. Okay, now I'm in my hometown. So I just、uh, completed the horse racing festival, and on my way back to Chengdu. So I'm very happy tonight, and to give this lecture in my hometown, Kanding, instead of、uh, the place where I live in now, Chengdu. And、uh, so I have worked, as you see, I have worked in the travel industry for about 20 years, and I love birds like you do. I've visited lots of countries,、uh, like Sri Lanka, Philippines, and I love the places there. But I always It always give me lots of inspirations. So, what can we make birding in China special? So, the, this is a frame. Frame I'm going to share with you first. When I give you some information about birding in China, and then why China? What make birding in China different? And what, when is the best time you can come here? And、uh, Why you come to China to look for birds with the alpine birding, and also some of our、uh, itineraries we can share with you. So give you some general ideas what you can do here in China. So first about birds in China, you know China is a big destination. So the country、uh, is a The third largest in the world, so we have lots of different habitats, lots of different birds, and so it's not possible to see most of the birds in China in one trip. So you have to go in different trips, even also in different seasons. So 
for birds in China, I'll talk about some bird ruins. So you get some ideas. Which desolation? Which part of China? You want to go first. And what the birds, what make the birds special there? And then some of the famous birding sites. And uh, then some in some endemic or special birds. So everyone can hear me? Yes, please. Go on, okay, that's please. good. Thank you. Good. Very good. So first, here's a map of China, give you information about the general topography of China. So you see, so generally speaking, China can cons China consists of several big uh, distinctive areas. First, you can see the lost eastern part of China. The birds there normally uh, they share the species of birds with Russian in these places, uh, like grouses, slow owls, and then you can see Mongolian Xinjiang zones. So these places are mostly famous for the desert birds like a Xinjiang, uh, Grand Jay, and then you can see uh, the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. But for this plateau, it is also known as a roof of the world. And it is the most beautiful places in the world. And there you can't see many birds like you can see in Philippines, in Sri Lanka, in Costa Rica, in Malaysia, but the birds there are endemic, like Tibetan rose finches and uh, uh, you know Tibetan sand grouse. So always there are lots of endemic birds in these places, and this is a very important places for some special birds, you know. And then uh, you can see the southwest China zone. Well, these places actually is the places where you can find the most of the endemic birds. So here we have a, uh, you know, yellow part, you know, highlights in the places, so we call Hendai Mountains. So these are super important places uh, in, Ch in, the, uh, in China. It is listed as one of the 36 hotspots by Conservation International in the world. So in these places, you are not, you know, there are lots of uh, local birds uh, <clears throat> like a white brown laughing thrush, very common one here, and the annual laughing thrush, and the China, uh, Chinese mono. And later I will tell, tell you, uh, show you some of the pictures. You know, this is most one of the most uh, important places for birding in China. And then middle China. So it's interesting, actually, Geographically speaking, it's not really middle China. So this is from tradition. So we, it is close to the eastern part of China, but we call them eastern part of China because, you know, the word China in Chinese means middle kingdoms. This is a place where the civilization belongs. So here you can see the, like a Chinese uh, <clears throat> magnetar and lots of uh, wintering birds and <clears throat> And then uh, South China. So here we can share lots of uh, birds with, uh, uh, you know, Burma, the country, the neighboring countries like Burma. And so this is uh, the places where you can see lots of uh, bird species because of the uh, location and the climate. So this is a bird zoo. And I see, I, would, I picked some of the pheasants. So China is known as a kingdom pheasants. So we have lots of pheasants. Well, Sichuan is a, a must place for you to go to see these pheasants, like a Tibetan or oh, um, uh, white eared pheasants. You know, we have four kinds of pheasants in China. Well, white eared pheasants. Here, they live in harmony with Tibetans. So you can see thousands of them if you go to the right place in the right season. Lots of them. And the golden pheasant can be maybe the, one of the most beautiful birds. But they normally they live in the bamboo clusters and the Chinese mono and the reef pheasants. So there are lots of pheasants in China. In, in one place, we can even expect to find five or six different kinds of pheasants. And, you know, 
Then why I come to China to, to watch for birds, to look for birds? So first, we have uh, lots of uh, uh, endemic birds. Well, sure, not so many as in Philippines. Philippines have, as, as far as I know, they have uh, more than two, uh, 200 uh, endemic species. But in China, we have 93 endemic species. And so these species, uh, you know, li live in different kind of a climate, just like China, Tibetan plateaus and the eastern part of China in the forest, the desert, so lots of places. And then, actually, when people go birding, they always ask this question. So beside birds, what else can I can see? So this will make one trip, one birding trip, more exciting. They get lots of additions. So in China, we have lots of uh, diversified resources, lots of resources, just like if we go to the Tibet, if we go to Tibetan plateau to search for Tibetan standard grouse, Tibetan zosfinch, pink tail bounty, well, we have a chance to see Tibetan gazelle, Tibetan antelope, so, and also lots of flowers. And if you have interest, we can also share with you our Facebook about flowers, animals, and the birds and the culture. And also another thing, what, you know, what makes China your important destination for birds is that China has a profound culture. I'm not quite sure, you know, especially, uh, you know, you know it or not. In recent years, especially in the past 40 years, lots of changes happened in China. But have you ever asked why it's China? So we have a, a long history and the Chinese civilization has continued for 5,000 years. So there are lots of things that we can share. So when I take our people to birds, I always like to share some information about Taoism, Buddhism, if they have interest. So besides birds, you can see a lot. And then, you know, just now we show you a map. And on this map, you can see the topography is so different. So that means when you go on a birding trip, you can see lots of spectacular scenery. Amazing. If you have interest, I'm happy to share even this trip. We have five days, we got uh, several hundred gigabytes of photos of, uh, you know, videos taken by our cameras and the drones. So it's a super beautiful place. And then China is big. So we have many uh, different styles of food because Chinese civilization was built on agriculture. So the food extremely de developed. So if you travel from east to China or south to north, you find there's so many different diversities of food. And then in, in the past 40 years, you know, when we do good birding, we need to move around. And then you would always need to worry about how easy we can move around. Now in China, it's super easy. We have Buddhist trains, and the road is super good. So you can have always gain lots of experiences. And then, yeah, it is difficult to make a good birding trip if you do not get a safety, safety guarantee. Yeah, I have worked in the travel industry for 20 years. So far, I have never got a client who had been got a, you know experience of being robbed or stolen or whatever. So it's always safe. You can just even walk on the street in the midnight alone. So China is Chinese extremely uh, uh, Chinese people are extremely friendly people. So it's very safe here. So this actually is uh, these are the good reasons for birders to pick China as your birding destination. But here I also need to apologize. Because you know we, we only use English for this kind of occasions. So in normal times we just speak Chinese. 
So sometimes I may make some grammar mistakes. I hope you, <laughs> okay, uh, I'm very sorry. Uh, then you can see, we show you the resources. What are resources? You see the green, the green, greenish part. These are the places where you consider. First, you give your top priorities to your burden when you, when you plan a burden trip in China. So it's a very interesting thing is that you see in the middle part of China, it is become it is a very greenish, right? So actually, this is a very important place. I mentioned to you about Hendai Mountain. It is a uh, you know, both Yunnan and the Sichuan province are covered much by this Hendai mountain. And in these mountains, there are lots of animals that have been saved because of topography. In the ancient times, it is extremely difficult for people to get there. So, and, uh, you know, this, this, even for the endangered animals like pandas, so they, they have found here. And also in these places, there are lots of unique birds, just like rusty through to the parabell, Chinese mono, black pheasant, golden pheasant, lady ahas pheasant. So all these birds can be found. There's thousands of uh, laughing thrushes in these places. So this is a super important birding place. And if you see the top, the itineraries provided by the top birding companies, uh, in the world. So they always start the birding in China, here, Sichuan and Yunnan. Well, you can, in the eastern part of China, you can see they also have a, uh, lots of uh, endemic birds. And then I'll give you, uh, you know, some ideas about the resources. First, about animals, mammals. So actually, uh, for most of the birding trips, we always have chances to see some incredible animals. Uh, just like here, the panda. Well, yeah, for panda, we visit panda habitat. Uh, but it, I, would, I, I need to say it is extremely difficult to see pandas, but for tacos, it's easy. Yeah. And moon bear, if we are lucky. And, you know, for the Europeans, uh, there are lots of uh, uh, flowers in their garden actually originate from China. So we have a huge number of uh, uh, plant species to, you know, uh, serve as addition to your birding trip. And then as minorities in China, we have 55 ethnic minorities and behind the majority is Han Chinese. So always you can see something different. You know, when we, for this scouting trip, we only have five days. When we travel from one country to another country, we see the difference in architecture. So this is different from uh, the places I went to for birds. You know, I went to Sri Lanka or Malaysia, but when we, when we move around, yeah, it's great birding places, but I see little change in the architecture, in the costume. But in China, when you move around, then you find there's a change in the architecture and in the costumes as well as birds. So always each day you can look for some special targeted birds. So then you can see, you know, the Chinese culture. I'm not quite sure how much you have interest so for Chinese culture, two things, two, uh, I think, aspects. You can, or if you have interest, you can read. But this will really help you understand the way how Chinese think. First, Taoism. Second, Confucianism. So these religions, they set the mentality of Chinese. And here we choose this, uh, uh, you know, these three signs. So I would just give you a very little uh, uh, information. First about this big Chinese character, you see this one, Tao. Well, this means a person, a road, a person walking on the road, the direction. So we, just like we do birdie. So 
you know, if you search, just want to see how many birds I see, just tick to end the tick list. And then, you know, uh, China might not be so great if you compare with some uh, tropical countries because they have uh, lots of uh, beautiful birds and, uh, uh, you know, lots of species, different species. But if you come to China, if you try to see many other things, then China can be a very good uh, place. So, and then Confucius. And uh, the first one, Taiji, you know, uh, black and white. This is how Chinese interpret, interpret the word just by these simple signs. Well, I don't have time to elaborate on it. But if you have interest when you come to China, sure, I'll work on it. I would, I'm very happy to share lots of information about this. And then you can see this is some costumes you can see during your birding trip. And, and the first three pictures, ladies, you see, they are all Tibetans. Even they are Tibetans. They have different costumes. So they, you, you can always find a lot of other things to see besides the different birds. Okay. And then the, the uh, other two are uh, the meow, meow. And uh, also the Buddhism, extremely popular in China. You see here an old man sitting there praying every day in front of a slow capped mountain every day. So you can always find a lot of things. And then scenery. You are sure today I can't share lots of sceneries. This is very typical scenery on the Tibetan plateau. And well, this is a prayer flags, okay? So in these kind of places, you can see, we can find the uh, shrushes and uh, the, like a rosy pipit, rose finches. So China is an excellent place for rose finches, just like Tibetan rose finches. So these are places. And also we may find uh, uh, top the deer in the bush. Okay. And also lots of autumn flowers, beautiful flowers from these places. And here, I will just give you a picture about, you know, the, the food diversities you can choose in China, okay? And so when is the best time to come? So I would say the earlier, the better. But you see why? I want to see birds, why the earlier the better? Because China is a developing country and it is changing so fast every day. And so the human cost or the cost for the, for the human resources just to keep rising every day. So it will become more and more expensive to do birding in China in the future. So the, now it's not so expensive when you compare it with even some, uh, you know, middle income countries is not so expensive it's acceptable but i think in the future it'll become more more, more and more expensive because of uh, the fast development of china and then we, we we know you know when we look for birds breeding season is the best time but in china because of different elevation so the breeding time is different so in some places it's April, just if, if you go to Western China, or the, sorry, Eastern China, there, the breeding start in April. So you need to consider that is the best time to choose if you want a birding itinerary in the Eastern part of China. If you come to Sichuan, then May is the best time because that time birds are most active. Or if you go further to the Tibetan plateau, then you have to come in June or July. That is the breeding time for the birds in China. So, well, another thing that lots of people think, oh, I only look for birds in the birding season because they are not most active. Yes, that's true. But actually, if you look for birds in the winter, it's much easier. The reason that lots of birds, they come together make it much easier to see compared with other times. 
So we have lots of wintering grounds in China for different birds. So October, November, December, January, February, these are excellent time for the birding, for the, for we, we want to see the winter migration. And also another advantage to see wintering birds in China is that that is always the slow season for tourism. It's not so crowded. It's very quiet. And if you are a photographer, that is the best time for you to take pictures, excellent pictures, just like those finches. It will be really hard for you to, you know, to search in the breeding seasons because they are comparatively more colorful. So they are pretty shy and you have to look really hard. But in the winter time, they come to the lower places, it's become super easy. And well, for the winter, for the, you know, for, the, if you, for people to see the migration birds, actually Yunnan, Sichuan, Tibet, and the central part, central part of China. Because we have a, if you look at a map of China, you'll find a, several big, Jangetic lakes. There are millions of birds there for the winter. For the winter, so they are always excellent place. And for Tibet, people think, oh, it's too cold. Actually, Lhasa is excellent place for wintering birds. Like if you want to find the Rudi Shadak, black legged crane, and common uh, <clears throat> mackinster. So lots of Winter birds, bar, uh, um, bar goose, those kind of birds, it's very easy. And because Tibetan people, they are, you know, they never hunt or chase birds. So you can really take good photos at a close distance. And also it is easy. You can see Tibetan uh, year pheasant, Tibetan partridge, uh, Tibetan partridge. So lots of, uh, birds for the winter. So winter actually is uh, the season most the birding companies ignored. But in my personal opinion, as a bird guide and a bird photographer, I think that, that is actually the best season to go. And so, so this is about time. And why are prime birding? So for us, so first we, we think, so every birding trip is not just a you know, they take the nest. So we think the process of birding is important. Okay, so we, we always, we have a kind of a slogan, which says travel is art. So we, even when I, guide, when I go birding with lots of birders, they're different. Some of them like birds, some of them also like to know some cultural things. So, but for us, we know people, everyone's different. So we have worked in this travel industry. We have worked uh, in the travel industry for about 20 years. And we have uh, provided birding services for about 15 years. So we know the most important thing is how to enjoy the birds, appreciate the beauty of the birds and also how to enjoy the local culture. Okay, so we are good at, uh, I think we, we, we have a good, very good team. Even for me, in my, in, you know, in my company, so I'm not the strongest bird guide. Actually, we have a, other guides are much more stronger than me. Oh. And so for also maybe you also have, you know, uh, in the previous lecture, uh, people, uh, you know, I heard about the price. Yes, people always ask price. And also it's interesting in China, if you ask me, hey, what is the average cost for a birding price, a birding in a trip? I will tell you, it's difficult to say. It depends where you want to go and what season you want to go. Because in China, the eastern part of China and the western part of China, the standard is different. If you go to eastern part of China, it's more expensive. If you go western part of China, it's relatively cheaper. So, and also depend, there are lots of different, you know, other conditions that may also affect the price. But for us, we think 
a fair and the fair a fair price is very important. So for our trade in the past, we always try our best to provide a fair price and with a quantity as a priority. So because we don't think the lowest price is the best. So we think the most important thing is that we can enjoy the trip to the bottom of our heart instead of just, you know, we took a birding trip. It's, so we should be say we really enjoyed every minute of a birding trip. So for us, I feel so uh, proud of my team. And, uh, you know, they, they work very hard, including you know, here, you see uh, Bella and the Shay and, you know, and also some uh, Peter Robert, some, some, you know, bird guides here. And also I need to introduce some of the bird itineraries to you. So, you know, you know, uh, about get a general ideas about the birding in China. So for itineraries, yeah, when you come to China, if you have never been to China, then Sichuan is your first, should be your first choice because this place has the most of the endemic species in China. And also we have uh, almost all kinds of uh, habitats in China. So that means we have a, a great variety of birds. Okay, and also, and you you may have heard of uh, the fam famous Sichuan food. Okay, Sichuan is very famous for the food, and also for the scenery, and uh, for the uh, you know flowers, uh, Hunduan Mountain. You know th these places uh, in Sichuan, and then Qinghai and the Tibet Plateau. Well, this is a very big area. This is a, known as a roof of world. Well, here you need to know, what you need to know is about, uh, about this place is that this is actually consists of two parts. So one part is what we call the Tibet Autonomous Region. Well, this, this place is a little bit complicated because if we go there, we need an extra permit from a Tibetan Tourism Administration. Well, but uh, uh, if you travel in other parts of uh, Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, like is the part in Sichuan or Qinghai, then you don't need that. So this is a vast area with uh, uh, exciting birds, lots of uh, uh, endemic birds here. And then Yunnan, Yunnan is a kind of, uh, I think uh, the best place for variety of birds. So if you want to see, I want, just want to see more species, Vina is the best choice because of the climate. It's warm there. And uh, so they have uh, also have a different habitats. And so there are lots of uh, different birds. Well, for the birds in Eastern and the central part of China. So nowadays it become very easy. So the Buddhist train almost collected, collected to all the uh, important birding destinations. Okay. And then Northwest China. So this is actually, uh, you know, the places for to find some unique birds like, like uh, grouses uh, in, and the slow owls or those kind of birds in China. So here, I give you some information about the birds. What do you can expect in Sichuan? Okay, so you know, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, when you can come. So first, you see the uh, bluebird is ground donor, ground donor. Uh, actually, this bird live pretty high and uh, it's pretty difficult, but it, it is an amazing bird. So if you go to the Bala Mountain in Sichuan trip, I think uh, the chance to see this bird is pretty high. And then you can see another one I mentioned to you, rusty through the parabio. This is only, you can only see in, in Sichuan, but it's a very tough. You can need to hike to the top of the mountain. Okay, then 
อินเนที่มีดิกทรักผ่านที่มีดิกทรักผ่าน so this is a cute bird but we now it is not so difficult very beautiful and then the uh, black necked crane this is only a crane you find on a high plateau and a fair throat and then here it's golden pheasant so I can't show you all the photos here of the birds here because I as a bird photographer I have lots of bird photos but I can't show, share all of them with you but I'm very happy to share you later okay I can see here it's seeing some special birds in Qinghai Plateau Qinghai Tibetan Plateau you can see uh, <coughs> Tibetan year pheasant it is a pink tailed bounty and you know uh, left list uh, partridge. So for these places, if you go to Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, I think you need to consider, you can't see so many species. So if you say, I want to see 200 species, this is not your big choice, this is not your good choice. You can see, you only find a small, uh, you know, very limited number of species. But they are all endemic, very unique birds. Okay. Okay. Sorry. And now Yunnan. So Yunnan is an exciting place. So you can see uh, lots of uh, uh, you know birds, more colorful birds because of uh, climate, uh, because it's more warmer there. Uh. And the eastern part of China, I can see here the uh, reef's pheasant. So uh, the a number of uh, you know uh, tiger shrike, lots of <clears throat> so lot, lots of uh, uh, pheasant. But also here, there's uh, several important places you can consider. You see, you always start with uh, uh, Shanghai, and then uh, you go to Xinyang to find uh, these reefs. Uh, pheasants and then Ermei Fong for uh, Timmy uh, for the track pine, okay. And northwestern China, so this is a mostly the desert, but it is a great place for uh, some of the uh, unique birds like white headed duck and uh, <clears throat> Azure heat and they, you know, white winged uh, woodpecker, uh, Xinjiang ground jay, so, and a common nightingale. So, the, but for these places, you need, always need to travel long distances. Uh, so, uh, you know, China is a great, great place for birds. And well, um, it is not possible to sh for us to share all the birds of China to you in such a short time. So we just give you kind of a, a general map of what you can do in China and uh, general information. So we can, you know, you can plan your trip to China and make a great birding trip here. So this is what I'm going to share with you. And if you have any questions, I'm very happy to answer your questions. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Philip. What an amazing presentation. You make, make us want to go to China right away. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? And one more thing I, I'd like to add. Um, Philip's company, Alpine Birding, has joined ABF since 2010, which is the first ABF. So three and old friend. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> Someone on Facebook said that she's really just going to Qinghai and Tibet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
So normally for the Qinghai and Tibet, it consists of two parts. First, the Qinghai. So Qinghai pr province, uh, it is also the best place for uh, the birds and mammals. Well, Tibet means mostly, I think that it means Lhasa because there are lots of places the general, uh, the, no, uh, the uh, normal birders can't go. So it's a restricted area. Uh, but so most of the, the birding in Tibet centers around the Lhasa, Lhasa and Linz, all this uh, just around nearby places. Uh, but the couch, from culture side is excellent place. And also I think another thing people can always try is a train from uh, Qinghai to Lhasa. So you can see lots of things. Well, Qinghai is a great place. I agree. You know, if you have interest and you are okay with the, the attitude, so that is a, a excellent place for birds, mammals, flowers, and culture, ethnic culture. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. More questions? Because you mentioned uh, if we want to go to China for birding for the first time, Sichuan mm -hmm. is our best choice. Um, how many days you would recommend to, to birding in Sichuan? Oh, thank you. That's a very good question. So normally for birding in Sichuan, uh, it is about, uh, it, the, the length is around uh, 15 to 18 days, depending on how many places you want to you know, include. So most of the birding trips should be around 15 to 18 days. So Sichuan is very big. Sichuan is the fourth biggest provinces in China in terms of land size. It is uh, 485,000 square kilometers. So it's a very big. And so it, it, the birding trip can be, can be long, can be shorter. And well, if you come for winter, winter birding, then it can be shorter because normally we say there are lots of places now that you, can, you, you don't need to go. So you only need to focus on several places. But the only thing you need to tolerate is that sometimes you may feel, if you, especially if you come from the tropical areas, the hot areas, so you may find it, it's too hot, too cold. Uh, because in China, generally, uh, if to the, all the cities, to the north of uh, Xi'an, in the northern part of China, they have a heating system. Well, to this, all the cities to the south of Xi'an, so they have two individual heating system. That means some, if they, the heating system doesn't work well, then it's pretty cold. But generally nowadays, the infrastructure, the facilities, the hotels are very good. So once you are okay with the cold temperature outside, it is a, it's a very good. It can be a very comfortable birding with lots of birds and uh, not so much walking, and they are not so much crowds. And what about the elevation? Is this is too high that we get a, the, the, the attitude? That's, that's a very good question. So in Sichuan, yes, we always need to go to some high elevation areas in China, uh, because there are some birds, you can only find them there. Just if you want to see Tibetan slowcock, snow partridge, they stay on the top of the mountains. You can't find them in lower elevations. So you have to go there. But the easiest, the easy way, I think the, the easiest, easiest thing is that uh, there's, there's always road. You don't need to climb all the way to the top. So we, in Sichuan, when we do go birding, so most of what we say is it's a roadside birding. So we drive to the high elevation area. And if you follow certain rules, it is okay. It should be okay. So far, we haven't got any problem with our participants about elevation. I mean, serious problem, yes. But if you feel a little bit headache, that's common. That means your body function well because your body is adjusting to the change of elevation. So that means, that means good. So you just take some mayors. It is okay, you know, yeah. You need to go there some, some of the high elevation areas. Yeah, thank you. But also remember if you like plants or mammals, then these high elevation areas are excellent place to go. To, to search, to look for them. And especially if you want to see the herds, you know, big flock of wildlife, that, that, that those places are the only place you can see them. So I have seen 
Let me say Tibetan antelope, maybe you know, hundreds, hundreds of them, and white leaped deer, hundreds of them, they just flock together. But that, that is the place you can find them, but they, they, are, they need to stay in the remote areas. So you can't find them in the cities, you know, it's not possible. Yeah, thank you. Philip, can I ask a question? Yeah, you are welcome. Okay, I'm a little bit confused with Middle China. Can you please uh, elaborate what is Middle China? Oh, thank you. Very good question. Okay, when we say Middle China, we need to see from two different things. So when you look at the map, the Middle China, and then that means the line which all this is a location in the Middle China, right? But when we say traditional Middle China, means the place where the Chinese civilization started, just like Hulan province. So they, you know, they should be, they considered as the middle part of China. But you look at the, China, the map of China, actually they are not located in the middle of China. They are not located in the middle part of China. But that is the place where the Chinese civilization started. You know, Chinese, China in Chinese means Zhongguo means a, 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 a middle kingdom, middle kingdom. So they take that as a middle part of China in tradition, right? So that's why I just uh, want to uh, emphasize that if you say, if I say, oh, you say this is middle, you know, this is middle China ruin. But you, if you look at the map, you see the proportion, you say, no, Philip, you're wrong. It's not a middle China. It is the Eastern China. But traditionally we take that as a middle China because that is the place where the Chinese civilization started. So that is uh, the place where how China got the name. So we call that Middle China, okay? So Western China is a huge, huge place. So we, we take that as a, you know, in Chinese history book, a history book, we take that as a kind of barbarian place, okay? Western China. So that's why I want you to emphasize, you, if you look at the map, it's different. You know, the Middle China is different from what we call Middle China. Okay, thank you. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I, would I explain this question to you? I, it's difficult to understand, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, yeah. It just means, yeah, if you look at the map in proportion, we would say middle, that means it should be the in the middle map, right? But when we, the place we call middle China is not in the middle of the map. It's just because this is the place where Chinese culture was originated. Started. What are the cities we can see in middle China? Oh, um, like if you want to see Cranes, Cranes. The, the, the city, city, the, the oh, city. location. Yeah. Oh, city, China, it's a good, good question. Uh, city uh, like a Wuhan. Okay. Wuhan, yeah. Middle China. And uh, Hulan, you see Hulan, Shenzhou. Yeah. This is what we call the middle China, yeah. Philip, there's a question here. Uh, do you use playback to attract birds? Pardon? Playback. Do you, do you use playback, playback to attract birds? Oh, that's a good question. This is a tricky. Uh, uh, it is really, really tricky because actually we learned this skill from the Western tour leaders <laughs> because the bird in China started quite late. You know, quite late. We actually, for me, when I first work as in the guide, I even don't know about birds. I know nothing about birds, to be honest. I started my birding from working as a logist guide. So then when the two leaders come, come, so they showed us how to tape. But there, there are a big, uh, how to say, lots of people against it. But I, would, I need to admit for the companies, they do need they do use uh, sound or they do tape to attract birds. But as normally we have a, a very strict uh, you know, rule to follow, just maybe once or twice. If it works, okay. If it don't work, we we'll give up. Yeah, we do use. And uh, this is actually is a big problem in China, especially in our days. It's even, we got another big problem because of uh, uh, you know, China, Divide so fast, so we got lots of uh, we call what we call the new riches. They have money, they have camera, the fastest cameras. So they always want to get their best pictures, best photos. 
So they may use even food or those kind of things to new birth. Yeah, but it is a controversial in China, and now it has become more and more strict. And I think uh, uh, it'll be it'll be better for in the future. Yeah, thank you. It's a good question. Yeah. Um, it's the general impression that there are more bird photographers than bird watchers in China. Do you have an That's estimate? Do you have an estimated number of bird photographers and birds? Uh, I don't know exactly, but I definitely know there are many more uh, bird photographers in China than birders. So for the birders, they mostly from younger people. It's very interesting because they don't have money and they don't, they can't buy expensive gales. Okay. So they, they, they study. So they look for birds. They, go out for birds, but for the bird photographers, it's different. They have the money, they have, a, they have the time. So what they need to do is go to a place and take nice photos and show off to their friends, you know? So we have many more bird photographers. So actually, this is a big, big issue now for us, even now. We always need to give them a correct guidance, how to take good, good bird photos. So for me, I think, uh, we, at least, I talked with lots of bird photographers because I'm, personally, I'm a bird photographer. So, and uh, I think it's also, it is a, it, is show, it shows a kind of a positive change now. And people become more and more well behaved because now even for some contests, the photo contest, so they do not accept the photos by, you know, they, you know, use a, the food, newer the bird or harvest the bird. No, they, they, they don't accept that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, I know the bird photographers and Chinese photographers and bird watchers do a lot of international trips. Uh, what would a particular place aside from birds? Sorry, or I can't hear there... because of the, the sound. I can't hear very clearly. Uh... Okay. Yeah. Uh, for some... There's a lot of bird watching. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I would suggest if people like uh, they they are more than sixty years old, and what what would they be the best itinerary you would suggest okay. to them? Best itinerary. Yeah, for the people like you know more than sixty years old. Oh, that's a good question. Um. For the people, for more than uh, two ways. First, in Yunnan. So nowadays, we also have another kind of thing where we call a bird hide, bird hide. So it has become kind of industry. It's very easy. You just sit there and the birds come. So nowadays, I think the government is, uh, not the government, I think a kind of, a, uh, how to say, um, organization. They are trying to guide the people in a proper way, uh, you know, when they try to build up the harmonious relations between birds and, uh, uh, you know, people. Just uh, the very typical example is Gao Li Gong, you know, in Bai Huaning. So there, you can always uh, sit in a, in a place and watch for birds. And also even in Sichuan, actually, we don't work walk a lot. So mostly it's just those side birding. So it's easy walk. A easy, easy walk, easy, easy walk. walk. Okay. That's a very easy, very easy, very safe walk uh, in China. Yeah. Okay. And and Herbert, you have some questions. Herbert, are you still there? Yeah, Herbert wants to know how many bull archers in China. Oh, this is I don't know exactly, but nowadays I I can only see. Uh, there's, there's a big increase, but I don't know exactly, to be honest, uh, I'm very sorry. I don't know exactly. I may find out later, but I, it's difficult to find exact number because in China, you know, people just go birding and uh, it, there's a no organization who will just uh, uh, make the statistics okay. to find out how many birders are, ex you know, exactly there. Yeah, everybody also wants to know. Do Chinese birders go international birding trips? Oh, that's true. Yeah, actually, there are more. 
actually, we, this year we, I went to Costa Rica, and there we see lots of. Uh, we also see some, uh, you know, bird photographers. Actually, in recent years, lots of Chinese uh, birders and bird photographers they go abroad. You know, I think this will be a very um, big change uh, in the coming years. There will be a lot more Chinese birders going abroad. For us, for our plant birding, actually we will, we are planning to bring the birder, more Chinese birders to outside the world. Because first, there are lots of different birds, you know, uh, in other countries. Second, I think uh, uh, we work in English, so we know English. And well, for the Chinese, because English is not an official language, but for lot, most of Chinese birders, uh, they don't speak English. So for us, we can build the bridge, you know. So we are planning to bring the birders, Chinese birders, to the foreign countries. I think this is a good message to all international birding companies. It's really yeah. good. Hmm. And, and, and Johnny from Uganda also wants to know how many birds in China, the total species oh, of birds. Yeah, just, yeah. We have about 1,470 1, birds so far because it's changing, because it's so big. And also, I told you, know, I said uh, the birding is relatively new in, in mainland China, even compared uh, with Taiwan. So I have been to Taiwan, I find that there, there are many more. Uh, they are doing much better job than us in terms of a bird study, you know, bird guidebook. And uh, so they're, they're doing much better. <laughs> but in China, the birding is just starting, starting, steady, uh, starting uh, break, uh, stage, you know, it's uh, new, relatively new. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. And uh, Mike also has some more questions, right, Mike? Yeah, please read it. Yeah. Uh, aside from from birds, you know what? What attract these people, or what are their basic requirement to visit a place? No, uh, in China, you know, you need a visa. This is very, uh, it is common for most people, for people from other countries, for most uh, countries, so they need a visa. And well, for the, the visa to China is not so difficult, as far mm -hmm. as I know. Uh, because in China, we actually, we want to know the world. Well, China also have a strong desire to let the world know us. So that means the Chinese government actually holds a very positive attitude toward the visitors. So they will not, uh, you know, uh, build some barrels, unless sure there's some other other reasons. But most generally speaking, it's easier. And the second, uh, for food, we have a lot of uh, different food diversity. So you only need to tell us what's your preferences. You know, just oh, I'm I'm veg. You know, I don't eat uh, fish or whatever. So we know, so during the trip, we can make arrangements. For other things, you know, just a very few places, just like if you go to Tibet, yeah, you need a permit. But you know, you don't need to apply that. You need to, when you come with us, we will do that for you. We just know there's a kind of process. We know, you know, when you go bird in China. For other places, it is easy. You don't need to, actually, you don't need to worry. I would say it's very comfortable to do bird in China and, uh, if you, especially if you have an interest in other things like a, uh, nature photography, flowers, birds, culture, and uh, actually birding is an ex excellent way to know about China and know about change about China. The Chinese, China has changed. So from, this is very, birding is a good, good window for you to understand China. So that, that's why I emphasize that, you know, in China, when you come for birds, it's not just for birds. It, you know, you can see a lot more things. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, it, it's really about time. So um, before we go, we must take a group photo. So guys, please turn on your camera. 
Those who thank you. Hide yourself. Okay, thank you. And Rajendra, we don't see you. Uh, Rajendra, we don't see you, Rajendra. And Estela. And Analu. Okay. Right. Okay, we see Herbert. All right. Hi, Rajendra. Are you with us? Okay, we see Estela. Uh, anyway, okay. Please look at the camera and smile. Okay. okay? <laughs> Three, two, one. Thank you very much. And thank you. See you next week. Next yeah, week. Thank you, guys. Thank you, time and Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome to China. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Bye.